Hey yeah, guys, I hope you are all doing good. So you're probably here for one of two reasons. You're either a uh, person who generally likes my videos and is just catching up on the latest uh, episode of what I'm up to. If so, thank you very much for being here and uh, watching this. Or number two, you're interested in finding out more about the DAISY 2012 uh, mod server that I've been working on with Dan for the past sort of two weeks. Well, you're in the right place to find out that sort of information. Let's get cracking. I'm going to give you a little lowdown on what the server's all about and what our plans are for the future. So I often get asked, what is the server all about? So the DAISY 2012 mod server is basically an idea that I came up with around about a month or two ago. Um, and what I wanted to do was try and emulate the feelings that I used to get when I first played the DAISY mod over in 2012. I think it was like sort of October, November time when it is newly out. It came out in June 2012, so I was a few months late to the party. But the feelings that I get now from playing such things like Overpock, Overwatch, etc. Just wasn't giving me the same feeling I got when I played the mod. And uh, what I was thinking of doing was um, combining my forces with Dan and going back and uh, trying to make a server that ran as close to as possible as what it used to be like when I first played the game. So it wasn't a particularly easy thing to do. There was a lot of discussion about how we're going to implement all these things. I'll save boring you all about the details of it all. But we found the easiest way to do that was to take the latest patch, which is 1.8.4 I think it was, and just strip it back. Dan's been through and removed all the non-vanilla items from the loot tables um, just because we found it a lot easier to do it that way than expect people to revert back to an old patch to play our server and then if they want to play another new server they have to go back again so Dan's been working really hard behind the scenes to uh, get the server up and running as it is at the moment. Um, we also decided to have a um, server based in New York with it being the kind of central point between uh, America um, England, uh, Europe and Australia um, obviously it would be much better for the guys in Europe to have a European server, Australians to have an Australian server etc but we found that New York was the most central place and the easiest place for us to host a server that would run smooth I'm getting about 100 ping where I am in the UK Dan's on the other side of America in California and he's getting around about 80 ping uh, and I've heard nothing but good things from the guys on the server even our friends in Australia can play with a decent amount of ping so that's the reason why we chose that I'm guessing that in the future we're probably going to have uh, other servers, maybe uh, have a European server or an Australian server. We will see how that goes. But for the time being, we are literally going to be using the uh, New York server as our base. So it may not seem like it just yet, but a load of hard work has actually already got into the server uh, as we released it on Tuesday the 7th. And that's actually today that I'm making this video. Just to go through it to show you the extent of what we've done so far, we've already sorted out the spawn items. So you spawn with the Makarov, uh, Makarov Mag, Bandage, Pepsi, Tin of Beans and a Road Flare. We've completely removed the temperature logic, but we may introduce that if requested from the community. We've removed the blood bag logic pertaining to blood types. So with the new patch 1.8, there were things like different blood types. We've completely removed that, uh, and we don't need a transfusion kit anymore to give players blood bags. Um, we basically, at the moment, are stuck with an O minus blood bag being universally working for everyone. There's currently a very rare spawn amount of the little med um, boxes, uh, and they do have all the different blood types, and we're planning on removing that completely. That's just something to slip through the net that we're hopefully going to try and change within the next sort of few days. We've removed sepsis uh, from eating raw meat as well as sepsis from zombie hits and other such things. I actually found a bug today whereby if I fill a water bottle at a uh, water hole, um, then uh, one of the pumps that you see around, um, that actually gave me sepsis. That's something again we need to go back and change, but sepsis predominantly is removed from the server. We've also reworked all the loot tables, removing unnecessary or conflicting items. There's no more beef stroganoff. Uh, there was like a cream cake I saw on there earlier on and other crap that came with the new update. We've completely removed all the non-vanilla items. If there are any that crop up, please let us know on Twitter. Um, we've also removed all construction materials, therefore you can't build anything, which is what we wanted. The only things that have been left in are camo nets and the uh, tent, obviously, if you want to store things. Uh, we removed the zombie knockdown, so when you run in past zombies, they do not knock you down. Um, it needs full testing, but all angles seem to be covered at the moment. Uh, we've also removed the uh, hit radius, we basically greatly reduced it. Zombies when we were playing during the alpha testing were hitting us from around about 3.5 meters away, which is no good. We've removed that by half, that's down to 1.6 meters now, so zombies are not going to be hitting you from so far out. 
We've significantly reduced the zombie spawn amounts as well. Um, we noticed that with the new patch, the zombies have been put up to around about four or five hundred on the server. So if you were running through Cherno, you could often amass around about 15, 20 zombies behind you, which number one, really impacted the game and how you played it because it was really hard to get away from them. And number two, it really impacted the frames per second in the server. So we've actually spawned the zombies down by around about a half. Again, this is still a work in progress. We've also introduced a, a new debug monitor as well with limited amounts of stats. We wanted it to be that when you killed someone, it doesn't come up in the debug monitor that you've killed someone as a murder. You need to go and investigate their body to see if they're actually dead. Kind of maybe gives the feeling that the person might be alive and if you haven't killed them yet, they may have a chance to get you back, you know. So we wanted to kind of cut it down and make it as condensed as possible. We've also introduced night vision goggles at three more locations. We are planning on having night time in the server, which we'll go on about later, but those have been added in. We've also increased the loot chances at chopper crashes. Um, when we first got on the server, there was not many items spawning by the chopper crashes, but now we've totally fixed that, and there's some decent things like Biosons and DMRs and M24s, etc., all spawning by them. And we've also set the debug monitor now to the insert key. So the debug monitor, press insert, that'll bring up your um, debug monitor or remove it as you wish. So now let me move on to the things that we have planned. We've kind of had some great feedback on this first day of testing and a few of these things are what we still need on a list to be fixed. Um, the main priority at the moment is reverting to the old UI style. Dan has literally worked out now how to do it. It's just a case of implementing it. So we'll have some server downtime over the next few days and we'll be implementing the UI and how it used to look. If you watch some old Daisy Mod videos, it's not going to have the silly cartoony crayon design behind the um, the blood uh, icon, the food, the drink, the temperature icon. Um, we want it to look like the old style. So that is something that we hopefully are planning on in, in the next three to five days. We want to completely remove the achievement system. That's actually tied to a multiple set of functions which Dan needs to go through and work out. That's not an immediate fix, but something we hope to have in the future. We also need to further reduce zombie spawns. They still, still seem to be spawning quite a lot. We need to go back and check out if uh, the amount is right, but again, that's feedback from you guys that let us know if you think that's about right. We need to revise the raw meat logic. At the moment, when you eat a bit of raw meat, it reduces your blood by 2,000, but actually on the icon with where the blood comes up, it actually gives you food uh, back. So your food, your food icon will actually increase, but your blood will decrease, so that's something we need to work out. We also need to evaluate blood regen, so that's something that got brought with a new patch. Let's say you're on 10,000 blood, don't eat or drink anything, but you're on general food and drink and you run about, blood will generally regen by around about 50 per kind of 10 seconds or so. Maybe not completely accurate, but it's something we need to revisit and have a look over, but again, not something immediate. We need to completely remove all the med boxes and all the contents of the extra blood bags. Like I said uh, in the previous things that we fixed, there are a few sneaky uh, med boxes that are appearing in places. We need to completely remove those. Uh, and also we need to do is go to the blood bag, remove the O negative in the description and just have it as blood bag. Um, so yeah, that's something we need to do. We also need to finalize the night cycle. We are planning on having um, lights in towns when you go into Electro, Cherno, Berezino, etc. We want a full moon and lights to be around the housing, but again, that's something we need to implement as well. We also need to fix food so that food item fulfills the hunger bar by 100%. So it's currently working on the standalone logic whereby you need around about six or seven food items to actually fully give you your food and uh, hunger back. So let's say you've got 50% food and you eat one, um, one bit of food item, whether it's an MRE or a pistachios, or whatever. The way it should work is that makes you not hungry anymore. Your hunger bar goes to 100% and you're absolutely fine. At the moment it works on the standalone logic whereby it only increases it by around about 15%, therefore requiring multiple food items before you get fully fed. We want to remove that and go back to the old style of one food, you're fully, basically not hungry anymore. There's also a circular uh, map marker on the map where your player is, there's a little red circle that when you press map will show your location, we want to remove that. We want to remove antibiotics completely from the system. Um, obviously at the moment with the sepsis being kind of a, a grey area that we're trying to work on 100% fixing, um, they're still in there however their uh, plan is for them to fully go. Um, we also uh, plan to remove the TeamSpeak IP address from the debug, that's a really small thing that shouldn't take too long. We've also had a good bit of feedback about the amount of backpacks that spawn. Backpacks seem to spawn quite a lot in the server, we want to reduce those significantly so that they're a lot harder to find. 
We also want to add the option to increase grass on the server. Uh, Dan actually removed the, the actual icon and the ability completely uh, in the menu uh, from the back of house system. And it actually really impacts the frames per second. It really improves it a lot. But we'd like players to have the option to have grass on or off. That's something, again, we're going to be working on. Uh, the water bottle is the item in the game that we want to kind of remove and put the old canteen back in again. Not a, a fix that's going to happen straight away, but something we're working on. Uh, we also want to have a uh, flashing debug fix. Um, sometimes when people get kicked from the server or whatever, the debug monitor flashes and does a few strange things. We're working on that at the moment and hopefully that should be fixed soon. And also the amount of ghillie suits that spawn around crash strikes seem to be quite apparent. Uh, a few players earlier explained that they went to a crash site and there were three ghillie suits per uh, crash site. That's something we want to strip back a little bit and maybe have one or two maximum per crash site because we want them to be a really rare item. A lot of hard work has gone into this so far guys. The ETA on all these fixes are around about 10 days to 2 weeks. Dan has literally been working himself to the bone, often staying up 24 hours to actually get the stuff done for this server. And we released it at a stage where we thought people will still enjoy it, but are aware that there are changes to come that will make the way of life better in the game and to make it emulate the mod a lot more. But these things don't happen overnight. We've got a great set of uh, people in the community that are helping us out to achieve what we want to achieve. But trust me, I want this to work out as much as you guys and make it as authentic to the vanilla mod as possible. And Dan is working tirelessly to get that done. So make sure you go and give him some support. He's over at twitch.tv forward slash raw underscore dandy or on Twitter as raw dandy. And go and give him some support, guys. Tell him what you think can be changed. Tell him what you like or don't like about the mod, obviously constructively, because every single little tidbit that he gets will really help us out in the future. So to close out guys, um, I'd like to direct you towards our Twitter which is at uh, daisy underscore 2012 or to visit us on our website at daisy2012.com. On there, there are a lot of options. You can see our patch notes, there's some setup guides, rules for the server, uh, and there's also a donate button if you wish to donate, a contact us button as well if you actually want to send us an email with your thoughts about the server. If you go onto the server main page as well, it will give you um, the current server uh, as to whether it's actually online or offline, which is cool. Um, also, if we um, look at the patch notes section, there is a bit at the bottom which is called possible later additions, and these are based on community feedback from you guys. If you want to see things added in or see things taken out, please let us know. Raw Dandy on Twitter. You can find me at terahertz if you want to tell me directly or the daisy twitter is daisy underscore 2012 or alternatively use the 2012 website um, feedback option on the contact us section there are things we are thinking about adding in at a later date number one adding the m107 the l85 hollow tws and the as50 as really 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 rare spawns maybe one spawn per server restart of each gun um, because that's what it used to be like in the mod. Uh, we want to try and get those items back in, but it's a way of reworking it in the script that, as I say, I am awful at script. I don't even know how or have a clue about how it works. Dan's your man for that and has got ideas on how to implement those. And we've also had some feedback about Turbo Run, which will be fixed, but again, at a lot later date. We want to implement animated crash rights. Again, possible later edition. Not going to be in there anytime soon, but it's something we want to think about in the future. And also implementing the old zombie sounds. I want to try and get those back in to kind of make it a little bit more authentic. Uh, but anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. and It's given you an oversight of exactly what our plans are for the future. As I say, it's little baby steps at a time, but it's something that we really hope you guys can get on board with. And I hope you do enjoy playing the server because from what we've played of it so far and the feedback we've got, everyone's really enjoying it. And I really hope we get more of you guys in the server. We've peaked at around about 20 out of 50 slots. If we can get you guys filling the server up and giving us your feedback, that would be much appreciated. Thank you very much for watching the video and you can see behind me some footage of us playing the server earlier on. So um, yeah, you can see kind of what it's like. But uh, thank you very much for all your support so far guys and I'm pretty sure the continued support you're gonna give us in the future. We'll catch you on the server and please check my uh, YouTube channel for later videos. I'm gonna be doing some obviously some series on the uh, server. So if you are gonna be doing your own videos, make sure to let us know what you're gonna be recording. Thanks very much for watching guys and I'll catch you all later on.